I think you guys forgot to feed Tom. I got you. Greetings to the Barbarian Horde. If you're new to this channel, I do not welcome you back, but I do welcome you aboard. In the last chapter, everyone was about to be burned to death and it was not looking good for our heroes. This is Chapter 9 of The Wailing Willow. If you missed Chapter 8, you probably hate puppies and sleep in a coffin. Nevertheless, you will be redeemed if you catch up on the story. Just click the link up here or follow the link down in the trumpery and you will once again walk in the daylight of righteousness. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon or a nest of malevolent spiders will form in your mattress. It's not worth the risk. Just click the stuff. And now before any adus are in any way furthered, Chapter 9. Read by Brian Carey. Chapter 9. I wonder. He reached ceilingward with his torch, stretching towards some low hanging webbing. No! You'll set the entire tavern alight! The room lit up in flames like the noonday sun. You've just killed us, you stinking ground, you chin faced chaos monkey! Before Angus could complete the tongue lashing Wolfric so richly deserved, the flash fire the barbarian started waned and extinguished itself. The whooshing sound of flame yielded to tiny high-pitched squeals of dying spiders lurking in the ceiling webbing. The webbing now consumed, the room darkened again to a dusky, smoke-filled gloom, and only a few stray embers of fire remained. Dozens of spiders, each the size of a human head, dropped dead from their lofty perches, plopping harmlessly to the ground. Some, upon impact, cracked open like burnt marshmallows. Wolfric looked pleased with himself. All the spiders, dead. That could have gone worse, Angus cautiously intoned. Chin-faced, Wolfric raised one eyebrow. Angus looked embarrassed. Your beard is so short, I just, you know... This reminds me of an old Dwarven saying. Words said in haste must be quickly forgiven while dwelling in a foreign land. Without a deep cultural knowledge of the Dwalmer people, including their proverbs, aphorisms, and expressions, Wolfric was easily tricked, nay, chicaned, into believing Angus's plausible-sounding Dwalmer social wisdom, and so he quickly forgave the dwarf. Orloaf, now you're just making things up, Stone Dome. Aye, t'was worth a shot, laddie. Though you didn't know, we wouldn't all die in that conflagration. If it got too hot, we could have gone back into the ice room with Wailing Willow. Angus stroked his beard. Not my first choice. You're welcome, Wolfric bowed. What? Let's find a way out of here. What? I... An indignant Angus sputtered. I'm welcome. Then Angus muttered, You conceited giant leprechaun. What was that? Oh, I said, I concede, good giant. Lead on. For a brief moment, Wolfric peered suspiciously at the Dwelmer and then suggested, There has to be a door or window or opening somewhere. This tavern was built into the side of a mountain, so there had to be a way to get the slaves in and out. But Angus had a more likely scenario. Unless the only way in was the very way we came in by, and people were smuggled in and out by night. Wolfric mildly winced at the idea. Let's hope not. We might be gripped. The mildly smoky room was cavernous enough so as to be difficult to see across. The two followed the walls around, which were mostly lined with shelving containing long deteriorated trumpery and rubbish. There were also broken cabinets, a destroyed mattress, an old dresser. Many shelves contained broken clay dishes. Toward the far end, they discovered an assortment of abandoned construction tools, a few decrepit hammers, pry bars, and an old saw. There were a number of fissures and cracks along the mountainside wall, large enough for small animals to egress, but none broad enough to accommodate a man or a dwarf. Oh, laddie, look what we have here! Wolfric noticed the shelf Angus feasted his eyes on. It contained many jars of a clear fluid, each containing a scorpion tail at the bottom. Dragon's milk. Dragon's milk, they mouthed in unison. 
I'm taking some as payment for this unwarranted perdition we're suffering. Angus took a tall bottle and slipped it neatly into the pocket of his cloak. You know, Angus, when we get out of here, I have to get some help, and we have to turn right around and somehow rescue Dane. He's my brother. I know it, lad, Angus lamented. You know, I just had a thought. Yeah? What if that body we found earlier, in the room with all the dead, you know, creepy crawlies? What if that were Willow's love, Matthias? If that's him and he's dead, we can't bring him back alive to Willow's ghost. I don't know. We'll have to get out of this dungeon first. We'll have to worry about finding Matthias or his body later. Warwick. Yeah? If it's any consolation, try not to think of Dana's suffering. Just think of him being captured. We'll get him back, boy. Wolfric nodded and the two started walking. They came to a large hollow or cleft in the masonry leading up into further darkness. Perhaps a tunnel. The brick in the stonework had spilled in from the outside onto the floor of the room, effectively making a ramp of rubble and debris leading up to the breach. The hole in the wall could easily accommodate an enormous snake, an average rhinoceros, or an adolescent dragon, none of which were particularly desirable options. This tunnel's probably where the dire rats are getting in. This is also the last wall, Wolfric observed. Other than this, there's no way out here besides the way we came in. And guess which twirler is not climbing into that putrid dry rat infested tunnel in the wall? Well, let me just peek in then. Using the torch, Wolfric walked up to the stony debris and peered into the hole. What do you see? Angus called. Wolfric reached in with his torch. Used to be spider webs in there. And with that cavalier comment, he enkindled the webbing in the hole. The space behind the cleft flashed into inferno along with a huge rush of air, and just as quickly, it quenched. Climb up, Wolfric signaled, standing in front of the cleft. There's no spiders or diorats left in there anymore. An intense tapping or drumming disturbance echoed from the hole. The unexpected sound caused the barbarian's blood to run cold. Before Wolfric's eyes, an object emerged from the cleft in the wall. One might describe the object as cute and white, with long fluffy ears and a pink nose that twitched, but to do so would be woefully inaccurate. What actually emerged from the darkness was long and black and multi-segmented. It was shiny and covered in bumps, as if all the hairs had been recently burned from the surface. The black articulated leg, as thick as a man's leg and much longer, emerged silently and planted itself firmly against the wall. Wolf tumbled backwards down the ramp of stones as a second enormous black leg identical to the first reached out and gripped the other side of the cleft. Wolfric quickly scrambled to his feet next to the dwarf. More legs emerged and then giant fangs appeared. And then a bulbous head containing eight black shimmering eyes. Angus beheld in awe and terror. Oh, Drek! It's a Tyrannorachnid! No, I think it's a giant spider! Their eyes were transfixed on the encroaching behemoth. Angus spoke slowly in disbelief. I believe I just said that. You lout. The scorched arachnid squeezed its enormous body through the cleft in the wall. The man and the dwarf backed away from the spider until it had fully entered the room. To describe this prodigious insect, first imagine a Volkswagen bug. Any economy-sized sedan will do. Now imagine it with spider legs. Now imagine you just scorched it, burned its nest, and probably killed thousands of its precious wee disgusting babies in silky white egg sacs. Our adventurers should have amassed considerably more experience points before tackling this hulking venomous monstrosity. The spider was as tall as Angus the dwarf. The creature's eight lidless eyes reflected the torchlight. She glowered at them with unchained malevolence and started drumming with her two back legs. She then raised her front legs and hissed. Run! The two shouted in unison. The human and the Dwelmer put their backs to the enormous she-spider and sprinted for the door, leading back to Willow's ghost. Mid-stride, one of Warwick's feet was hit by something sticky and was instantly glued to the ground. He fell hard, nearly snapping an ankle. It's got me, Angus! The Dwelmer's shorter legs couldn't match Wolfric's stride, but now Angus passed him by before looking back. It's wearing! Cut yourself loose! I'll distract it! Wolfric held his torch over his foot and started chopping at the silk with his longsword. Angus took aim with his bow. It's still coming, Wolfric clamored. Shoot it in the eyes. Which one? It's got eight. I don't know, the big one. 
The twang of Angus's bowstring rang out and the arrow took wing. His arrowhead struck at the edge of an eye, sticking into the bony carapace, but not before rupturing one of her eyes. Recoiling, she hissed and squealed in pain. Her attention was now focused on Angus. Wolfric chopped his foot free of the webbing. He noticed the emerald green venom dripping from her fangs. He desired the use of a bow to keep the creature at distance, as his only weapon, his longsword, would force him into striking range of those fangs. She lunged at Angus, moving with breathtaking speed considering her mass. Angus knocked another arrow, and just then the behemoth spider lunged, sinking a fang into Dwelmer's calf muscle. Angus screamed out and fired his arrow at point-blank range into her hideous face, taking out another eye. Pain must have been profound, for she screamed and flung Angus backward, where he impacted a support beam in the wall, nearly knocking him unconscious. At Angus's impact, Wolfric saw dust float down from the ceiling. The support beams in the walls were loose. He had an idea. The spider fired webbing at Angus, who grabbed at his leg in anguish. Emerald green gel seeped out of the wound. Meanwhile, Wolfric ran for the construction tools. He snatched a pry bar. He jammed the short end of the tool behind the nearest support column and started prying. The wood creaked and pulled away from the wall, and then as the timber started to fall, Wolfric pushed, guiding the direction of the fall. The spider crept slowly and menacingly toward Angus, waiting for him to die so she could feast on his fluids. At that moment, Wolfric's timber crashed down on her, finding its mark just ahead of the giant abdomen, the largest part of the spider's body. At the moment of impact, purple goo shot from her mouth, splashing Angus across the face. She hissed and squealed and started skittering her legs, trying to get free. Timber had pinned her to the floor, but she was not dead yet. Good one, laddie! Angus moaned, still holding his leg. Now finish her! Wolfric ran up to her, torch and sword in hand, and started swinging his longsword. She flailed back wildly, and Wolfric managed to lop off a leg at the joint. Purple spider juice sprayed from her decapitated limb. She instinctively started backing away, slipping out from under the wooden beam. Angus pointed. She's getting loose! I know! Wolfric considered a last desperate deed. He would throw his sword at the monster's prickly head and hope for a death blow. Angus saw Wolfric's torch. The Dwemer reached into his cloak and pulled out his bottle of dragon's milk and shouted, Throw the torch! What? Wolfric looked over to see Angus holding the bottle. Blast me! Angus bellowed. Throw the torch! Wolfric threw the torch at the giant spider, and Angus heaved his bottle, which shattered over the spider's face. Her head burst into blue and orange flame. Her eyes now gone, she shrieked in pain and dashed for the cleft in the wall. She was halfway there, screeching in pain, before she collapsed from the spreading conflagration. Her legs twitched violently before collapsing inward. Flames spread and engulfed the rest of her enormous body, lighting the room and slowly consuming her, while putrid fluids leaked out onto the floor. The barbarian knelt down next to Angus, who was squeezing deadly green venom from his wounded leg. Oh no! Is Angus gonna die? He will unless you share this video series with a friend. Click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the bell icon. Click it now or the Dwelmer gets it. Now that you've done your duty and clicked the like and subscribe button, you're eligible to click chapter 10 right over here. And maybe, just maybe, you find out what happens next. Quick, click it before a cat video shows up. Or yoga!